and follow all the action as it happens over the weekend as a result of our good, good friends at SL Clubs. If you are out and about, jump onto their Twitter feed and keep abreast of what's going on. Championship game of the week, Mark. Uh, I've got a Rochdale away at Featherstone. Rochdale has started well, but then started to falter as well since that. But they've been coming up against good sides. Feverson are another good side. Mm. They've started 100%. But these these are probably the two non... that not full-time sides that are the interesting mm-hmm. stories at the top of the table yeah. so far this season. So it, it's worth going with them. But I do think a Fev win. Yeah, me too. Fev are a good-looking side. League 1 game of the week then. It was very difficult to find one that really stuck out other than just going with Toronto, which I, I sort of thought... I didn't want to do mm. because I expect them to put 40 points on the Scholars to be honest by the, yeah. by the end of the game mm-hmm. um, so I've gone with Keithley against North Wales this is two sides that were both disappointing last year and so they'll want to get off to a good start Keithley obviously will be missing some players <laughs> through, through injury <laughs> one or another, yeah. um, North Wales had a disappointing result last week but it'll be interesting to see how they bounce back yep so I, I'm I'm going to throw out an North Wales win and and see the resurgence of the dragon. I'm going to stick with my West Yorkshire roots and go for a Keithley victory, despite the uh, the injury and suspension chaos that will probably ensue in the coming days. And of course, think, this week, Mark, the NRL's back. I think Keithley is going to be the next ground I attend All right. um, on my neutral viewing trips. Cause I'm going to. Try and go. I think it's in a month's time. Let me just double check. Um, their game against Toronto at the end of March. Yeah. So if anyone wants to join me on that one, we've yeah. got a month planning. Excellent. Okay. Uh, NRL is back, Mark. Yeah, loads of games with mm. loads of British players potentially lining up. I haven't seen the team sheets yet. They'll probably be announced during while we're recording and that sort yeah. of stuff. Won't they normally come out on a Monday morning? Oz time, so it's hard for us to sway either way or even know which of our players are going to be playing. But yeah. obviously, James Graham at the Bulldogs. So Friday, seven a.m. our time, Bulldogs versus the Storm. Uh, it all kicks off on Thursday night, but I don't see any Brit interest in Cronulla versus Brisbane. Nope. Um, Friday at five past nine then in the morning uh, the Rabbit O's with the Burgesses play the West Tigers on Saturday at 5.30 in the morning if you're up feeding your children or whatever um, <laughs> Dragons versus Panthers we should see um, obviously Gareth Widdett mm-hmm. is, is the main draw there from a British point of view Saturday, after that game at 8 a.m. so no, more normal waking up time Cowboys versus the Raiders Multiple British interests there with Elliot Whitehead and Josh Hodgson. And potentially Jordan Turner. Jordan Turner. Potentially as well, yeah. Um, Saturday then at 10am, could see Joe Greenwood and Dan and Sargentson, Sargentson make their NRL bows, bows as the Titans play the Roosters. The Titans are, a, are I think, the sneaky... I've got a sneaky feel that the Titans might do well this year, you know. Do you find do well? Top four. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. It's just, I think them and the Raiders will be in the conversation with the normal people like the Cowboys, the Broncos. I think you're on the Raiders. The Storm. I think you're on the, I think you're on the money with the Raiders. We'll have to see with the Titans. Uh, then on Sunday, 3am, if you're up late Saturday night or... Bring your pizza very, in. You've been out on the piss. Very it's off time. And look what you've got. Warriors versus the Knights. Potentially Joe Wardle will mm. get a game for the Newcastle Knights. We shall see. There you go. Right, so that is the world of rugby league well and truly covered. All that remains for us to do now is to wrap up the show. So, uh, the show wrap-up, Mark, and I have neglected in my in my agonies today to look at whose birthday it was, so this is going to go quite poorly as we uh, come to the SLP trivia section of the show. What have you got for me? Well, Tom, I'm back to the traditional birthdays, two players, Great. five clues on each. Can't wait. See how you go. I think Ugh. for those who were looking forward to some NRL stuff, no NRL links to these two players okay so some out there will Colin Render this is for you two out of two I expect Col um, 
Right, the first one turned 37 today. Unless I got his birthday wrong, but he turned 37 today, I think. Uh, any shout outs from anyone? Current, currently playing. That's a, uh, we haven't got to the clues about where he still plays or not. And it's a he. Of course, it's a he. I presume <laughs> we've not gone into the realms of women's rugby league. That would be a, that would be a you, hiding. You'll do that. That would be a hiding to nothing. Yeah, you best try, you best let, better learn something about fat weave ladies, mate. Because otherwise, you enjoy. turn thirty seven today. Um, okay, let's say Lee Gilmore. Right, go on. He is a two time Lance Todd Trophy winner and a one time Harry Sunderland Trophy winner. Peacock? No. Right, okay. This former fullback was a one club player for his whole career. I couldn't decide whether to go with this clue first or the one that comes up next. Uncle Fallback. Paul Wellens. Yeah. Thank you. The next clue was 2006 Man of Steel. Would you have got it off that? Yeah, you probably should have done it the way around, yeah. actually. I would, have, I would have had to think more about who was the Man of Steel in 2006. But yeah, Paul Wellens. Said Helen's fallback. So, the second one. Is he only 37? Mm. Paul Wellens is two and a bit years older than me. Well, the last clue was he captained his side to victory in the 2014 Grand Final and retired in 2015 from a long-standing hip injury. There you go. So, there you go. There you go. Paul Wellens. Okay, the second and final one today. He turned 26 today. Right, okay. Today as we record, not today as you listen out there. So, people. Monday... Uh, 26, 26, 26. Oh, the fucking tongue. Now, yeah. next one. He made his Super League debut in 2009. Okay, so he's played for a while. It's not Hardacre, is it? No. He made his international debut for England in 2016. Full international debut, I should say. Full international debut. Yeah. He's 26. Is he second rower? We haven't got to his position yet. Oh! There were, there were, I think, four debutants in last, four or five debutants in last. And all. Whitehead? Is it all Whitehead? Probably around that. Like, no, he's been playing in for England for four years. Oh, 16, 2016. Okay. Yeah. Um. Da, 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 da. So this is when my mind goes blank now and I start trying to think of who played when. Okay, well, do you want the next Is it Luke Gale? No. No, of course it's not. He's fucking much older than that. Go on. He was a member of Wigan's 2013 double winning side, appearing in both finals from the bench. He's 26. Twenty thirteen. Is he still playing for Wigan now? It's not part of the clue. Don't I get to ask questions? No. From the bench, from the bench, from the bench. There'll be people out there who've got it now, I think. I don't think so, yeah. Um, go on. See, you were so drunk at, at, at Coventry last year that you can't remember who played and who didn't. No, I was caned. <laughs> I was hammered. Um, right, okay, do... final clue. Go on, go on. In 2016... I'm not even get off this, you know. In 2016... Right. He started for his hometown side at Prop in their Challenge Cup final victory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Scott Taylor? Yes. <laughs> Fucking hell, fire. <laughs> like the fact you had to cover your face to stop yourself from laughing at me. <laughs> Scotty Taylor. It's easy when you fucking know the answer. I thought I, 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 I fed you through that one quite well. You did? You did? They were good? Someone would have got it off the... Someone out there has got it off the 2016 England debut. I, I think. think so, yeah. I think so. Oh, someone will have ran through the head and thought Lomax, Gale, Taylor. Mm. I just tripped myself up and I, I, I'd convinced myself it was Bateman. But of course it's not Bateman. Bateman's not 26 yet, but... I'd kind of because mm. I'd said Whitehead I went no okay well we were around like when Bateman started playing when he was very you know a lot younger and I just got that stuck in my head a little bit and I think that put me on the wrong track but no that was good fun 
I actually got it. I'm happy. Mm. I'm, I'm happy if I just get them. Yeah. To be honest, I'll take that. Um, what's coming up this week for us then, Mark? Well, Tom, you will have to do some heavy lifting this week. Oh, Slash, we're going to have a watered down rundown next week, kids. No! <laughs> um, because I'm away. You are. From Saturday morning until fast. I should, if EasyJet don't let me down this time, land in Liverpool at about 6 pm. I will be driving home, <laughs> printing off whatever game reviews we've had, mm-hmm. because I don't think I can explain to you how to get to them and it not like. Be catastrophes. Be a, a, a world of. I just expect to have to get them, and that's okay then, isn't it, then? Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and we... Maybe you could humiliate me off there. Uh, we'll just do the quiz. Then I'll come to this. No, I'm letting you do the stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we might as well talk about this in front of everyone. <laughs> I'll get the, the the Thursday, and I'll try and get the Friday stuff okay. done, and get a rundown email over, to, uh, uh, at that stage, rundown email over to you by Saturday morning. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm away in Belfast. Right. So I'm um, yeah, go on. So not to make it about me. So I'm looking at stats for Salford, Warrington, and Catalan Witness. Then yeah, but we've got lots coming up. Obviously, games wise, with three games on TV. Mm. Um, you know, the games spread over three days, so people who want to go to multiple games have got the opportunity to do that as well and still see lots of TV action. And we've got the NRL back, so you know, people keep us updated on how the British players have got on on those that played because. I probably won't have caught, well, I definitely won't have caught any of that action by the time the show kicks off next there Monday, you go. hopefully. Fabulous stuff. Excellent. Um, I have a recommendation, Mark. Good stuff. Yes. It's a movie I watched on Sunday night, last night, in fact, as I was recovering. And it's a fairly ironically titled film as well. It's called Killing Them Softly. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a, I love a good mafia romp. Um, and this one's got all the right pieces James Gandolfini, um, Ray Liotta. A, a, a robbery goes wrong and much chaos ensues Brad Pitt's in it um, I don't want to give away too much is there a comedy on, slant to it? on the plot no no it's all quite serious ok um, or if there's a comedy slant to it I've missed it completely <laughs> I've missed it totally and I've been saying oh, this is brilliant um, but I'll, yeah it's got, and it's got the late great James Gandolfini of Sopranos fame in it as well so if you've not seen it it's, it's four or five years old it's called Killing Them Softly um, it, was, yeah, it was thoroughly enjoyable and I I haven't seen it before, so it's it sure. great to discover that one. So I recommend it wholeheartedly. Well, my recommendation is playing us out because mm. I was looking for things to do whilst we we're in Belfast because I didn't just want to drink loads both nights. Um, so, so we'll do. I'm that sure Emma's so disappointed to learn you won't be getting pissed two nights on the trot. And then we'll be uh, planning. We're going to go and see the Titanic Museum and, and the docks and all that sort of bit on the Sunday in the day and I thought we need something for Sunday night I had a look around to see what was on and I found there was a like a concert on at one of the venues brilliant uh, called the Waterfront and it's a it's called it's um, Scott Bradley's postmodern jukebox so I thought that sounds quirky I'll have a look into what they are and when right. I when I hit YouTube I just got it go on carry on when I hit YouTube and they started going through their songs they basically do established well known hits a lot of pop hits and but a, a range of genres mm. and they they play them in vintage styles so a lot of swing a lot of jazz right some of the songs they're doing like a, a beach boys style okay. or a Janis Joplin style there's loads of things in there but basically swing and big band and that sort of stuff is mm. the predominant theme that they do they rotate in loads of different people in the band how interesting different singers and stuff so I just on Saturday afternoon rolling through YouTube yeah. like and Emma, and Emma told me I had to turn it off because we like would ruin any potential surprises that we'll have I think we've already done that with the amount of songs right. we listened to so we're going to be played out by um, Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox featuring Hayley Reinhardt um, doing a rendition of Creep by Radiohead. But um, so that's, that's my recommendation this year, this week. This Sorry. week, there you go. Right, and I'm, I'm hopefully I'll have some good things to tell you from Belfast. And the quiz next week will be. Can I do the quiz? Can I? Can I? Can I do the quiz? I've written the questions already because they're uh-huh. linked to rugby league in Northern Ireland. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm already annoyed. <laughs> right, well, there you go for the 131st time. Thank you very much for listening to the Super League Pod. If you want to contact us, we are at Super League Pod on 